right, this is CR 2018-114770-001, State of Arizona versus Brittany Ann Zamora. This is the time set for sentencing. Appearances for the record, please. Your Honor, good morning. Lacey Fisher for the state. And for the record, Your Honor, the victim attorneys for victim A's guardians are present and victim B's guardian is present. Thank you. Good morning, Your Honor. Belen Olmedo Guerra on behalf of my client, Brittany Zamora, who is in custody, sitting at defense table. Good morning. All right. I know typically I ask that you approach the podium, but, but today I'm going to ask that you just remain seated at counsel table for the sentencing. All right. Please state your true and correct name. Brittany Ann Zamora. And your date of birth? 1591. The court having previously accepted your pleas of guilt, it is the judgment of the court. You are guilty of three crimes. Amended count one, sexual conduct with a minor, a class two felony and dangerous crime against children. The offense occurring in Maricopa County between September 1, 2017 through and including March 22nd, 2018. As to victim A, it is a non-dangerous, non-repetitive offense under the criminal code in violation of the statute set forth in the plea agreement. <coughs> it is also the judgment of the court you are guilty of amended count two, attempted molestation of a child a class three felony and dangerous crime against children, the offense occurring in Maricopa County between September 1, 2017, through and including March 22nd, 2018. As to victim A, it is a non-dangerous, non-repetitive offense under the criminal code in violation of the statute set forth in the plea agreement. It is also the judgment of the court you are guilty of amended count 15, public sexual indecency, a class five felony that occurred in Maricopa County between September 1, 2017, through and including March 22nd, 2018. As to victim B, it is a non-dangerous, non-repetitive offense under the criminal code in violation of the statutes set forth in the plea agreement. The court has read and considered the pre-sentence report, the stipulations in the plea agreement, the state's sentencing memorandum, defendant's sentencing memorandum, and the many letters attached to that sentencing memorandum. I have considered the psychosexual evaluation provided by the court at the settlement conference. I have considered the information provided at the settlement conference, including the sentencing, um, the, the, the uh, settlement conference memorandum, excuse me, that was provided at the settlement conference, and the deviation request submitted to the state by defendant. And finally, I have considered the sentencing memorandum for the victim impact statement for victim A that was provided to the court. You have been in custody 478 days. Does that sound correct? Yes. All right. From the state. Your Honor, first, um, victim A's father's representative, Ross Richelsoff, would like to address the court. Yes. Unless Mr. Osborne would wish to go first. Actually, you made an arrangement that oh. I would go first. <laughs> Thank you. Please come forward. May it please the court. Brittany Zamora, I represent the mother of victim A, known as Lee Doe in this case, and she asked me to read this to you, her thoughts and what your acts have caused that. I feel that my son, victim A, has been severely physical, mentally, and emotionally affected by this traumatic experience. Brittany Zamora betrayed our trust, you betrayed our trust, and changed my son forever. Before, he was an innocent child, and now you stole his innocence from him. Now he feels he's older than what he is, but he is not. He's still a boy. He doesn't know his boundaries now. You damaged his perspective on women, girls, love, and people in general. He may never be the same. He's lost trust in himself. He's lost trust in those around him, those he should trust, his teachers. But he has all the love and support of his family, and together we will help him in every way possible to secure himself for the future. His life changed dramatically after what you did, Brittany Zamora. And he's having a hard time dealing 
with these changes, changes of school, changes of location, geography, friends, and sports. Not to mention having a hard time dealing with cool kids gossiping about him, social media gossiping about him. He can't sleep at night. His thoughts wander. He remembers what happened and how it affected him and now how it's affected his family as well. It makes him angry. He doesn't know who he is anymore and he's trying to find himself again. He gets a lot of headaches. He's depressed on almost a daily basis. He sleeps on and off during the day. He's stressed, anxious. He has a lot of mood swings and emotions he can't deal with in a healthy way. He feels numb and confused about his life and scared for his future. His father and I are making arrangements for him to secure private psychological counseling, an expense to us because of you. I'm grateful that the state provided counseling for a period of time, but the state's assistance ended and that obligation to provide him counseling and any other treatment is now on us because of you. It's expensive, $150 a, a session, and I want the court to please keep the issue of restitution open so that you pay monetarily for his treatment. We're making arrangements with a psychologist for this purpose, and of record is her fee schedule. I could never have imagined also how hard it is to find counselors who are willing to help when there's a criminal or civil matter pending that they may inevitably become involved with. I understand that regardless of how skilled the counselors may be in the field of child sex abuse, knowing that they're going to likely face lawyers to try to minimize the impact of this abuse on my client's son, the attorneys, for example, representing the school district, in this case, that I'm involved with, his family and me is intimidating to those counselors. The research on male child sex abuse is frightening, scary. Uh, in the record is a citation to a book on the subject. And we had victim A, boy you molested, examined by a Dr. Gartner last year. He wrote, in May of 2018, victim A is currently traumatized by not being able to finish his school year, and he certainly is aware of the traumatized reactions of his parents, which in turn are likely traumatizing him. He has strengths that seem to be blossoming under his father and stepmother's care, but his temper and tendency to act out angrily may develop into full-blown problems as he matures. In particular, since sexual abuse and assault are interpersonal betrayal traumas, I know you have studied these things as a teacher. They often have serious implications for future interpersonal relationships. Therefore, as victim A further matures, he needs to be watched, supported, and discouraged in the areas most common among sexually traumatized men. Difficulty having interpersonal relationships, especially intimate ones. Aggressive acting out when he loses his temper defiance against authority, problems with keeping boundaries with others, especially those in authority or who are romantic partners, addictions, compulsions, emotional numbing, sometimes alternating with inability to control or emotional outbursts, an unusual need to control others, perhaps like you, difficulty with trust, with trust, self-esteem, and such symptoms as depression, anxiety, guilt, Shame, low self-esteem, self-destructive or self-mutilating behavior, eating disorder, antisocial personality disorder, behavioral problems, and post-traumatic stress disorder. Within a reasonable degree of psychological certainty, these may lie in my son's future because of you. I hate you for what you did to my son and my family. We should not suffer for your sick pleasure, but we all are. I strongly feel that the plea deal is too lenient for you, but I support the plea deal and ask that the court award the maximum under the plea deal. You should never have children. You should never be close to children, even in your own family. 
you're going to be almost 50 when you leave prison, as the maximum sentence is. And I hold out two hopes that you'll be treated as one by them. I think you suffer from a mental sickness that will never go away. Society should be protected from you. And I think you should be more strongly punished as well. Punishment for yourself and to show others not to follow the path you follow. I'm also angry at those who say that they think abuse like this of a woman on a young man is somehow less serious because it happened to a boy and not a girl. They show those that think that way some of what's bad about you, but Mr. Mohawk. Maybe you found your behavior somehow less evil because you're a woman taking advantage of a boy. No good mother wants her children to lose their innocence like this if boys are truly ready. No good father should feel differently. And every child, no matter their sex, deserves to enter puberty and adulthood free of monsters like, like you and what you did. I've had problems sleeping myself and interacting with family and friends. I feel depressed myself, cry at night when I'm alone. I'm so broken hearted and mournful for my son and what he's had to endure with a teacher he thought, we all thought, he should trust instead took advantage of him. We don't know to what extent of damages you've caused this, but we feel, I feel, he'll suffer forever because of you. I've lost the joy in things. It's impacted my pregnancy, my enjoyment of my younger kids going to school. So, Your Honor, we ask you to please award the maximum sentence under the plea agreement in this case of Brittany Zamora. We hope you spend many, many years in prison and may find rehabilitation, although we don't hold the power for it. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. And now it's my understanding that victim A's father's attorney would like to address the court, Russ Richesoff. I'm Russ Richelsaw. Um, I represent victim A's father and stepmother. I have a letter that they've written to address the court and directly to Brittany Zamora. To the court, we, J. Doe and M. Doe, the father of step and stepmother of victim A, have asked our lawyer to read this statement in hopes that you will sentence Brittany Zamora to the maximum sentence possible under the law due to this heinous, to the heinous nature of her crimes and the irreversible damage she has caused not only to our son but also upon our family. While we appreciate the efforts undertaken by the state to resolve this matter, we do not believe any prison sentence is long enough. Once Brittany Zamora is released from prison, this monster will get to enjoy the freedom to live the rest of her life outside prison walls. Our son, on the other hand, has been stripped of and will never recover the innocence of his childhood. There are so many milestones that our son will now go through with a different frame of mind as he gets older. He will miss out on so many important emotions and feelings when it comes to relationships with women throughout the rest of his life, all because his trust was betrayed by a sixth grade school teacher. Over the course of many months, this woman intentionally set out to groom our son for her own twisted pleasures under the guise of being a trusted teacher, caretaker, and school district representative. She offered to tutor our son after hours. She offered to babysit our other small children. Little did we know at the time, it was all part of an orchestrated plan to rob our son of his childhood innocence. Your Honor, this woman is a twisted monster and she belongs behind bars. In sentencing this defendant, please blind yourself to the fact that she is a woman and her prey was a young boy and not vice versa. If the genders were reversed in this situation, there can be no doubt that this defendant would more likely than not face a sentence closer to life behind bars than a sentence where she has the possibility of being released at a young enough age where she may still have a child of her own. <clears throat> this monster cannot be trusted around any children at all, period. She preys on the innocence of children. 
She knows how to manipulate and gain the trust of others around her with only a grotesque and disturbing agenda in mind. She is a disgusting human being who deserves no less than the punishment of spending the rest of her days in prison, which is the same time frame that we will have to endure the damage she has caused our son and our family. To Brittany Zamora, this is from a client's father. I hope you spend every waking moment in your prison cell thinking about the horrendous crime that you committed that got you behind bars. You stripped everything from my son, and now you will spend the rest of your youth and much of your adulthood in jail. You will be a registered sex offender. You will never work with children again in your entire life, let alone be any kind of teacher. I pray that you never have the blessing to have your own child. Know that you have brought nothing but disgrace and turmoil to your new husband and your own family with your vile and disgusting behavior. I hope you rot in your prison cell for at least the next 236,520 hours, and you spend every one of those hours praying for forgiveness for the horror and pain that you have caused us. Brittany Zamora, I need you to know this. My son will grow up, have a good life, get married, and have children of his own. I will not allow you to interfere with my son's life any further. Throughout history, good has always triumphed over evil. You are just another dark shadow, and as a family, we will defeat you. We will not allow you to hold our son back or continue to drag him down any longer. Your Honor, with this sentencing, we are hoping that you will give new meaning to the phrase, justice is blind. We are hopeful that your sentence will help close this awful chapter of our lives and bring to public light the fact that no matter the gender, when it comes to sex crimes against children, a child is a child. And no matter the predator, male or female, the damaged cause is the same and justice will come down harshly so the new wave of predators will think twice before acting in such a horrendous manner. We believe it is time that a judge stands up for children when they have the power to. Too many have come and gone through the criminal justice system with lenient consequences. It's time for a change so the children of this world can be just that, children. Sincerely, the father and stepmother of victim A. Um, Your Honor, we're asking the court to find that the aggravating factors laid out by the prosecutor in the state sentencing me memorandum substantially outweigh the mitigating factors presented by the defense, and that you sentence Brittany Zamora to the aggravated term of 27 years in prison. Thank you. Thank you for your statement. Thank you, Judge. And now victim B's guardian would like to address the court. Yes. Would you like to write the podium? Yes, please. Thank you. Here today and place for my family and my son, who at the time of this crime is only 11 years old. He is a straight A student who loves school. He is a kid that lights up the room with positivity. but want to be his friend. During a time of sixth grade, in Ms. Zamora's class, I started to notice a change in him. He wasn't that happy kid anymore. He became quiet and distant. When I found out of the disgusting things that my son witnessed at school, a place that every parent trusts to drop their child off every day, is when I realized why he changed. 
He witnessed sexual acts between Mrs. Moore and the other victim that no child should ever have to encounter. At times, he was told to be a lookout. He felt so uncomfortable that he removed himself a second time. Instead of teaching subjects like math and English, she showed him pictures and asked him about his private parts. She tried to groom my child into believing that this behavior was okay. We tell our children to listen to their teachers, and Miss Samora used her position as a teacher to keep my son quiet by telling him that she would throw, be thrown in jail if her secret got out. She knew this was wrong. She's a true definition of a child predator. Ms. Zamora starts a friendship with these boys and gains their trust and then lures them in for her own sick sexual desires. Everything she did was strategically planned for only one outcome, sex with a child. This has affected our family and my son deeply, and we're trying to make sure that he can still enjoy a normal childhood. As adults, you grow to become the person you are because of childhood experiences and memories. I pray every day that this does not have a lifelong effect on my son. An example needs to be made of Brittany Zamora. She is a woman of position and power and used it to molest a child. She is a pedophile and is no different than if a man were sitting in her place right now. If she had not got caught, how many more children would have been hurt by her? The less time she spends in prison, the more opportunity she has to prepare for another victim. Brittany Zamora, you hurt my family. You created a horrible time frame in my son's childhood that he'll never forget nor can change. Because this crime is going to be a lifelong battle for our boys, you deserve the maximum sentencing. Let this sink into your head, Brittany. Your mind is foul, your heart is ugly, and you disgust me. You should be embarrassed and ashamed of yourself. You deserve to leave prison at an age where you cannot bear children of your own. You deserve to spend the next 27 Christmases alone, the next 27 birthdays alone in your cell with no family and no friends to comfort you. Brittany, the more your secret is out, the world knows you are a child molester. And while you sit in your cell and think that maybe things will get better, they won't. You are forever labeled a child molester, and everyone hates a child molester. Your Honor, the facts in this case are beyond disturbing. They're truly, truly shocking. These are children that we're talking about, sixth graders, a 13-year-old and an 11-year-old. Your Honor, I know you know this, but children inherently trust adults. We tell them to, as a society, to trust adults. And even more so, children, parents, the community, put our trust in teachers to protect our children when we leave them at school. We put our trust in teachers not just to educate children, but to protect them every day. Every day, today, this morning, children throughout the country were dropped off at school by their parents. And those parents believe that the teachers were not just going to educate the, their children, but help them learn and grow. It's almost beyond comprehension, therefore in this case, that the person that these parents trusted so much to take care of their children was the very person who harmed them irrevocably. It's undeniable the violation of trust that this defendant committed while she was in such a position of power. And it makes this case even more horrific and warrants an aggravated sentence due to that position of trust that she held and the way that she used it to not only commit her crimes, but also try and cover them up. Beyond the impact that this is gonna have on the victims, which is undoubtedly immeasurable, it has also had a substantial impact in the community. The defendant's actions will have a long lasting impact at the school that she worked at and on the other students there. It will have impacts on the teachers there 
and beyond that, schools throughout the community, throughout the teaching profession as a whole. Because that trust that we tell our students to put in teachers has been diminished in a way that will be hard to get back. As to the impact on the two children in this case, I think our representatives succinctly talked about how this will have profound and everlasting impact on them. The impact is immeasurable, and I believe and I hope that these children will be able to move forward past this and that their families will be able to heal. But there is no denying that it's something that they will have to carry with them for the rest of their lives. It will always be a part of their childhood, and it will always be something that they carry with them. Something that's going to be much longer lasting than any punishment that this court could ever put forward. As an aggravating factor, the young age of these victims also cannot be overlooked. Anytime we see a case where an adult preys on a child, that's something horrific and something to be taken very seriously. But these children were particularly vulnerable, only in the sixth grade. And that's an aggravating factor that the court must consider. The defendant's conduct itself was incredibly aggravating. The defense in their mitigation wrote, and I quote, Brittany is a good person who made a mistake. Judge, this was not a mistake. This was not a momentary lapse in judgment or a singular incident. These were repeated choices over months. Repeated act, bad acts with multiple young students. The defendant chose to engage in sexual intercourse with victim A on multiple occasions, in her classroom, outside of the classroom, picking him up from his grandparents' home. Make no mistake about it. This was not a spur of the moment thing. This was not a one-time drunken incident, nor was this someone who just got caught up in the moment. These were planned, repeated bad acts. And while I recognize that the defendant accepted a plea, and that that is part of a mitigation factor of acceptance of responsibility, I think that significantly diminished when they characterized what she did as some sort of mistake. Because it was anything but a mistake. Not only had the defendant been planning these months for act, or these acts for months, which is evidence from the text message conversations that she had with these children, but it's also evidence afterwards when she took extreme lengths to try and cover up what she did. Everything from telling these children not to tell on her, not to come forward, to harassing the victim's family afterwards, begging them not to go to the police. Her attempts to cover up the crime are an aggravating factor that the court should consider. Finally, again, Your Honor, as I noted, while acceptance of responsibility as well as the defendant's family support and young age are recognized mitigating factors, I think it's important to note that the only reason the defendant was caught and is sitting here today is because victim A's parents were monitoring his cell phone. This is not a circumstance where she saw the errors of her ways and tried to stop what was happening. In fact, it was the exact opposite. As you just heard from victim B's guardian, after repeatedly sexually abusing victim A, the defendant began to groom victim B, an 11-year-old child, for her sexual purposes. She engaged in sex with victim A while having victim B watch and act as a lookout. And she showed victim B pornography and asked him sexual questions. If victim A's parents had not discovered what the defendant was doing, there is little doubt that there would have been even more victims in the defendant's already considerable wake. <clears throat> Judge, as you know, the plea allows for count one 
a sentence of between 20 and 27 years in the Department of Corrections. Count two is a stipulated sentence of lifetime supervised probation with all sex offender terms, computer usage terms, and registration, and the same can be said for count 15. As to counts two and count 15, I would ask that you follow the terms of the plea and sentence her to the lifetime probation after she's released from prison with the stipulated terms, the fines and fees, and the registration. As to count one, Your Honor, the state believes an aggravated sentence of 27 years is appropriate. I outlined the aggravating factors in my written sentencing memorandum, and I just briefly discussed them with the court, but they include harm to the victim, the defendant's abuse of her position of trust, the victim's young age, the defendant's attempts to cover her crime, and the need to protect future victims and deter future similar conduct. As I stated before, while there is mitigation that the defense has put forward, including family support and the defendant's young age, as well as her acceptance of responsibility by taking a plea, I think those are strongly outweighed by the aggravating factors in this case. While the state does not dispute that taking a plea signals acceptance of responsibility, the message that defense has sent through their sentencing memoranda minimizes that. In the memoranda, the defendant blames everyone for what happened except herself. She in fact goes so far as to blame victim A for his quote, sexual advances that she could not turn down. She blames the school and the principal for what are in actuality her bad actions. Your Honor, given all of the factors that I've outlined, 27 years in the Department of Corrections is the appropriate sentence in this case. I would ask that the court retain jurisdiction over restitution for both victims. Thank you, Judge. For what period of time? The court was contemplating 750 days. Do you believe longer than that is necessary? I believe 750 days is sufficient. If the parties need more time or the victims need more time after that, they can notify the court. Okay, thank you. Counsel? Yes, Your Honor. We do have family that would like to speak. Certainly. May I have a moment? Yes. Please start by telling us your name. Is it Diane? I'm sorry, Judge. Diane. Good morning, Judge. My name is Diane. And I am proud to say that I am Brittany's mother. I stand here in front of you today, Your Honor, to represent Brittany's brother, sister, cousin, husband, family, and friends, many of which would like to stand and speak to you directly themselves. However, given the publicity of this case with the high media coverage, it puts not only their jobs but also their families at risk also to do so. Yes, Brittany is remorseful. Is she a monster? Or are the people, their followers, and the media? Her father abandoned her for his pregnant mistress when Brittany was 13 years old. Within months after that, Brittany was told that I myself had multiple sclerosis. Brittany then began to not only help me and learn to administer my shots at the time, Brittany also began trying to be so grown up, and I believe she became confused. Her self-esteem faltered, her self-worth, her idol, her dad left her with no explanation. He denied Brittany was his daughter when questioned by the media, stating he was her father's brother and that her father had died. Throughout her teen years, she began working part-time at first, then into full-time, and she also threw herself into her studies. She never was one to party, drink, or smoke. She wanted to prove to herself that she was worthy of something. She earned her bachelor's degrees with many honors and 4.0. Brittany married her best friend, and then she continued to earn her master's degree again with a 4.0. 
Intelligently, she excelled. Emotionally, she lost her teen years and a part of herself. Even though inside she was personally suffering, she did nothing but give all of herself to others, always there for those in need. Brittany was never the person whom had to have the latest fashion. She was very frugal and appreciated anything she had and worked very hard to accomplish, being the beautiful human being that she is. Her risk assessment proved she would never be at risk for this offense again, that she needed counseling. So let's not forget the term rehabilitate. I do believe due to the media coverage, she has been given an unfair advantage by preconceived ideas to the public. Brittany has been the sunshine in so many people's lives. She led many events for school. She was teacher of the word of the year, prom queen, as well as she organized many charity events, such as the MS Walk. She had t-shirts made for the events, autism walk, heart health walk, and many others. Her thoughts and actions were always to help others. Even her time here in jail, she was helping others to learn in order for them to pass their test. She held Bible study group every a.m. She got the girls up exercising a few times a week. She's been well liked, well liked and appreciated for all she has done to help others. Her compassion is beyond words. She cared so much for others in any aspect they needed, shoes, clothes, organizing and forming special teams. Your Honor, I respect you, your authority, and your decisions. Please understand, this is not a monster. She is a beautiful person with the kindest heart ever. Hopefully you can see through her characteristics, letters, and the true person she is. On behalf of myself, family, and friends who all know her, the true her, not what the media and the public are making her out to be with many false accusations, we beg you to please limit Brittany's sentence in time as low as you can. Thank you for your time. Start by telling us your name. My name is Chris Farney. Good morning, Your Honor. <clears throat> I first met Brittany when she was 14 years old and have been a part of her and her family's life ever since. This was a very difficult and tumultuous time in her life. And facing all the challenges of becoming an adolescent wasn't enough for Brittany. She had her strength tested to its fullest capacity when her father had an affair cheated on her mother, and resulting in a subsequent divorce shortly thereafter. This had tragic consequences on Brittany as she was suddenly thrust into regression, having to try to comprehend the inconceivable act that her father had committed, and to make sense of the destruction of her world in its wake. Not only did she lose her faith and trust in humanity, she had lost her best friend, her advisor, and her security. She lost her self-worth and her self-esteem. She poured herself into her schoolwork and studied feverishly way into the night just to keep herself busy and her mind occupied. It was a constant effort for her to keep herself from having to face the harsh reality of the emotional scarring going on within her from the breakup and loss of her father. And to make it worse, he made little or no attempt to contact her. And even when he did, it was sparingly and only with his new girlfriend and their baby along for the visit. This only occurred for the first few years, and then she was totally abandoned by him. Brittany became withdrawn and depressed, but always tried to put on a smile and her, uh, on her face, uh, hiding her suffering inside. I, I believe that a part of Brittany died when she lost her father. And out of denial, her spirit froze in time, and inside, she wanted to be that 13-year-old girl forever. Although a poor substitute for normalcy, it was a safe and a happy place for her. 
As time went on, she continued to excel in school and on to college with too many degrees and accommodations and awards to ever mention. Despite the crippling effects of an anguished heart, she met a man that she loved and married. Besides being there for him and her family, she was a rising star in a successful teaching career that finally gave her some traction and fulfillment. Even with all of that, she found time to coach girls volleyball, girls basketball, and donate to the less fortunate, even work in a soup kitchen on the holidays. If the cause of justice is to exact fairness according to the balance of moral rightness, then I believe a person's total core value should be a mitigating factor when we as flawed humans ourselves decide the fate of another human being. The person you see before you here today, Brittany, is a loving, caring, compassionate woman that has an emotional, crippled heart and mind that has a superhuman ability to succeed. And with determination and dedication and the proper mental and emotional support through habilitation, she will be an amazing asset to society. And it would be an epic tragedy to just throw away this beautiful life. In all humility, I stand here in desperation, pleading for latitude and leniency to whatever extent you have in your heart. I ask that Brittany be evaluated by her spiritual and core values as a person. I ask that even though a frenzied media hungry for a story and an angry mob of people spurred on by the sensationalism stand ready to scourge their victim, that you will take a moment to find compassion and understanding in your heart and make a decision that is fair and humane in the eyes of God. I ask for the court to guide her with care and love instead of imposing a harsher sentence of more prison time. Yes, I am a Buddhist and I truly believe in karma for our thoughts and actions and the need to accept our part in extending a hand out to help others elevate their consciousness with understanding and compassion. Thank you, Your Honor, for your time and patience. May God bless you always. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, may I remain seated? You may. Your Honor, we ask the court to follow the terms of the plea agreement and consider the mitigation that has been provided to the court. We ask the court to sentence Brittany Zamora to 20 years in the Department of Corrections, followed by two lifetime probation terms. This court presided over the settlement conference and has the materials as the court already enumerated. In addition, the court is in possession of all the sentencing materials provided by defense. However, I'd like to highlight a few things for the court. Brittany today is 28 years old. She has no prior felony convictions or has ever been in trouble with the law enforcement. This is the first time that she does anything remotely close to this, and she definitely acted out of character. As her family outlined, she has been very successful in education, in her own personal education. She <coughs> used her education as a way to a refuge from problems. She completed high school and then attended the university and obtained her master's degree. Her family has been unconditional. They're here today. They have been with her through this entire journey. It is extremely difficult for them to be present and to put at risk not only their safety, but also their livelihood, their job. It is a very difficult position for their friends also to be here. Throughout this case, Brittany's family, who was already very close to her, was her nucleus of life, became even closer. And that has given her the sustenance to continue through this year. The court is in possession of all the character letters from her family. I had to go through each letter and remove their addresses, 
phone numbers, and all the identifying information. Some of them even requested that I remove their last names just because they're terrified of what the repercussions could be for all of them and their family. As Darlene mentioned, a lot of family members wanted to speak, but they sent Darlene and Chris as their ambassador on their behalf. One common thread that all the letters have is Brittany's character. They all outline how well loved and respected she has always been. When Brittany's already absentee father left, she was 13 and became a leader in her household. She started working multiple jobs to contribute financially. Although there were other siblings, everybody was older. She was the youngest and the only one with mom for a long time. Her mother's illness reached its peak and Brittany became the caretaker. She took new responsibilities, but none of that affected her, her drive, her schooling, her GPA. Throughout her life, Brittany has volunteered and raised money for multiple charities. She's a daughter, a sister, a friend that all can count on. The letters reflect her character. She does not have a single ounce of malice in her bones, in spite of everything that has been said about her. She does not like to see other people upset and will always put other people first. During this case, as her attorney, I recruited mitigation specialists, data analysts, and psychologists to conduct research and develop mitigation. Everything has been provided to the court. The data research revealed strong data, and it was presented to the state in an effort to reduce the original plea, but it was not successful. The mitigation was also developed, but it did not make a difference for the state. A psychologist conducted a psychosexual evaluation that included a polygraph, which is called a lie detector test. The entire assessment revealed the truth about Brittany. She's not a monster. She does not have any interest in children. She was found to have anxiety, depression, and a compulsive disorder because she likes things to be organized. Although the headlines in the media have misled the public about her true nature, there was not a plan. She did not plan this. And I do stand by my statement that she did make mistakes. So we are here today, and Brittany knows that what she did was wrong. She does know, and she does accept it. The court has the power to weigh and balance the mitigation versus the aggravation presented by the state. She took a plea without knowing exactly what she was going to get other than a significant range that is 20 to 27 years that cannot be discredited. She's a great candidate for rehabilitation. She wants to change her life, and she already started that. She relinquished her teaching certificate. She's never going to teach again. She has made other plans to go back to school. She's going to be one of those people that will be learning for the rest of her life. She wants to earn another degree, develop another career, and start over. We understand the state's recommendation, the victims of Penny's <coughs> recommendation, 
the victims, guardians, and parents. However, we ask the court to balance and take everything into consideration. Brittany will be monitored by the state throughout the two lifetime tales for the rest of her life. She's going to be a registered sex offender. She's going to have sex offender terms and will never be able to escape the government's eye. The plea agreement is structured to ensure that there is plenty of monitoring for her forever. A sentence of 20 years is a flat sentence in this case, which she will have to serve day after day. 20 years, it's a very long time. She is already planning in signing up for every program available. And she tried to do that at the jail already. The resources are limited at the local jails. So there were not that many classes available. <coughs> so Brittany decided to become a teacher to her peers. She began teaching exercise and helping them with their reading and writing. She is a true helper, and she does not have a malicious nature. The pre-sentence report also has taken everything into consideration. The pre-sentence report indicates that they feel appropriate a presumptive term, which is 20 years. The minimum for this type of crime was never made available to Brittany. It is built already, starting at the presumptive, leading to the aggravation. In terms of restitution, we understand that things are not tangible at this time. Brittany is waiving her presence for any future hearings. However, we ask the court to take note, although there will be no decisions made today in that regard, but there has been a settlement agreement reached in the civil aspect between Brittany Zamora and her husband's homeowner's insurance. They have already paid a civil claim. In addition, there is a $2.5 million claim that is still outstanding between the victims and their attorneys and the school district. We ask the court to take everything into consideration today and ask the court to use its power to weigh and balance everything today. Brittany is a good member of our society and punishment of 20 years is ample. She needs rehabilitation and counseling as Dr. Toma indicated in the report. There is no denial that she needs therapy. For all those reasons, Your Honor, we ask the court to take everything into consideration. And in addition, we ask the court to give her credit for her time served. Ms. Salon, would you like to say something? May she remain seated? Yes. She would like to reach the podium, Your Honor? Certainly. apologizing to the victim and his family. I'm sorry for any undue stress or pain that I may have caused. I'm ashamed of my actions and am completely remorseful and truly regret what took place. I'm known to be a responsible, caring, happy, and thoughtful person. My actions were completely out of character for me. As an adult and teacher, I am meant to set an example and I did not follow according to that expectation. Prior to this incident, I have been an amazing teacher and citizen. I started programs while teaching to help stop bullying, teach girls about nutrition, 
fitness, create fundraisers to help with autism and help families in need. Fill 25 plus desks with school supplies each year and even one teacher of the year in 2016. As far as a citizen goes, I've lived my life respecting and trying to obey every law. I am not a threat to society by any means. On the contrary, I have tried to help our society as much as I can. This includes helping out the homeless, volunteering for the city, and giving time to assist with church programs. Over the past 16 months, I've grown within my faith, and that has helped me not only get through each day, but has led me to reflect on how sincerely I took life for granted. A life that I've been working so hard to set up for a successful and bountiful future. I would do anything to re-enter society sooner for a second chance. This sentencing is not only taking decades of my own life and experiences away, but those of my loved ones as well. My family knows who I am and my heart, so it is just as hard on them. Therefore, I would also like to apologize to them. As stated earlier, I never want to hurt anyone, and it tears me apart to know that I have, and I'm deeply sorry. Going forward, I would like to attend counseling and all other required courses. I obtain a new degree in seeking employment. I have already relinquished my teaching certi certification. My hope is to rejoin society a better and more grateful person. I have an incredible support system and know they will all be there for me every step of the way. Your Honor, I know the state did not take my mitigation and assessments into consideration, but I hope you can. I am a good and genuine person who made a mistake and regrets it deeply. I ask that you please have leniency in regard to my sentencing, that you see me as a person with a hopeful future and not just another number or case. Thank you so much for your time and consideration. Thank you for your statement. Since she's already at the podium, why don't you just remain at the podium? All right, the court has considered the nature and circumstances of the offenses. The court has identified aggravating and mitigating circumstances and weighed and balanced those circumstances. As aggravation, the court finds the defendant's conduct caused physical, emotional, and financial harm to the victims. There were mul multiple victims. The defendant violated and abused the position of trust. I find the circumstances of the offenses to be especially aggravating and the fact that these events occurred over a period of time. I also find as aggravation the defendant's efforts to conceal her conduct from others. As mitigation, the court finds the defendant did accept responsibility by pleading guilty. She has expressed her remorse. She has no prior criminal history. I considered her age. I considered the difficulty she experienced while growing up, as described by her mother and in all of the reports I have read. I have considered her character, as described in all of the documents I have read, and the accomplishments uh, and achievements that she was able to um, complete prior to these events. I find that she has community support. She has family support. I have also considered the information in the risk assessment, and that includes some mental health issues as described by her attorney. I've also considered the fact that under the plea agreement, the defendant will be on supervised probation for a lifetime term on two counts. So, after weighing and balancing all of these factors, the court finds the stipulations in the plea agreement are appropriate. I am going to order that the defendant register as a sex offender as to all three counts. I'm going to order that restitution remain open on all three counts for a period of 750 days. For amended count one, the court finds that the presumptive term is appropriate, so it is ordered the defendant be incarcerated in the Department of Corrections for 20 calendar years 
with credit for 478 days of pre-sentence credit. As to amended count 2 and amended count 15, it is ordered suspending the imposition of sentence and placing the defendant on supervised probation for a lifetime term to begin upon physical release from the Department of Corrections. The terms and conditions of probation are in writing. You will have an opportunity to read and sign those terms shortly. When you sign the terms of probation, it indicates to the court you understand and will follow those terms. If you do not follow those terms, you could be returned to court and found in violation. Your probation could be revoked and you could be sent back to prison for the maximum term provided by law for each of these offenses for counts 2 and 15 as amended. Do you understand? Yes. You are to follow all of the standard terms and conditions of probation. In addition, you are to have no contact with any victim. You are not to return to the scene of the crime. You are to follow the sex offender terms of probation and the computer usage terms of probation. As financial assessments, there will be a $20 probation assessment on amended count 15. All other financial assessments will be on count 2. There will be a $500 sexual assault assessment, a $65 per month probation service fee, a $250 sex offender registration fee, a $20 probation assessment, a $2 victim rights assessment, a $50 address, address confidentiality assessment, a $20 time payment fee, and a $13 criminal penalty pay, payable to the Goodyear Police Department. Provided in the plea agreement, it is ordered that counts 3 through 14 are dismissed. Do you have any questions about any aspect of your sentence? No. You have 90 days from today to file a notice of post-conviction relief with this court. You have the right to have an attorney represent you. If you cannot afford an attorney, one will be appointed for you. If you cannot afford the necessary records and transcripts, they will be provided for you at no cost. Do you understand? Yes. Counsel, is there anything else from the state? No, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Counsel, anything else? No, Your Honor. Thank you.